And I think it's not just about the four-day work week. This also applies to remote work and compressed working weeks and flexible hours that it boils down to what is the work being done? Who's the human being doing the work and what is their particular needs? And I firmly believe then the lastly there, it also boils down to how are we creating a work environment? Because work has to be easy to get done. If it takes you most of your time to figure out whether people are at work or not, as opposed to actually getting the job done, I think it creates a lot of inefficiencies that doesn't necessarily lead to benefit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HR hot topics which is the show in which we talk about some of the news articles that we've read in the past month and discuss how they impact our lives as hr professionals and the world of work my name is eric van vulpen with me is dieter veldsman and today we have a particularly exciting story for you we're talking about an organization that piloted the four-day work week but then failed and decided not to implement it and what are some of the lessons that we can learn from that but before we dive into the story let me remind you that these and many other stories are all part of our aihr community if you're interested in joining and learning more visit us at aihr.com Our main story is published by Fast Company and titled Why This Company Ditched Its Four Day Work Week. This is a story about a company that moved from five days, 40 hours a week to four days, 32 hours a week, and some of the challenges that they ran into. And let me elaborate a little bit on some of these challenges. First of all, they had client facing workers. Two people uh, in the same team couldn't be off on the same day simply because you can't, you know, downgrade your customer service from five days a week to four days a week. And then there were other issues like would you work on your day off? Or would you be on standby, you know, in case a colleague would call you? And people also had the feeling that they were playing catch up, that feeling that if you go on holiday, you know, you need to do a lot of work before you can finally leave for a couple of days. They are having the same feeling, you know, in order to be off for three days, one day and a weekend, people had to catch up and make sure that all the job, all the work was done creating stress. And my question to you, Dieter, is I know you're not really a fan of the four day work week, but you know, based on some of these learnings mm. and some of these issues, do you see a, a, a way in which we can make the four day work week actually work? I think Eric, we can definitely do so. Uh, but I do think that what we can learn from this particular article, what I loved about the article was one of the first articles, I believe, that gives both sides of the coin. I think a lot of people have jumped onto the bandwagon of the four day work week is the future. And yes, there is a lot of good research around well being and flexibility, etc. But there's also this dark side to associated with it around how work will take place. So what I take out of the lesson here for us really to get the four day work week to work, the first one is everybody needs to be doing it. And I think that's a, a real challenge for us as part of that because that is going to boil down to what is the type of work that we do. You mentioned, you know, the clients are not going to stop for this particular company just because the company's decided not to work mm. on Fridays. Mm. So I think we are going to face that challenge around workflow. What is workflow going to look like? And are we actually designing our work in a way that allows for people, not everybody to be at work at the same time? Because I think that feeling around, I'm not on top of my work, I'm always catching up that this company also mentioned, that's going to be a real challenge for people. And that's going to lead them towards saying, you know what, I'm actually going to work on my day off. Last thing there is I think we have to then instill the discipline into the organization and into the individual employees. And I'll put up my hand there. I'm one of the big guilty parties there. You know, not still to check Slack messages or emails or to work on the day off because that's when you actually find free time where people are not, that's not bothering you. The difficulty is going to become if other people are working at that time and it's your day off as part of the four-day work week, all that's happened is it means that you're not working in the office, you're working someplace else. So mm. definitely opportunities, but big challenges for us to overcome. Yeah, so what was interesting in this case is that after the, the pilot, they ran a, a survey and they saw actually that employee satisfaction was down for many of these re reasons. Mm -hmm. And they also found that people weren't really able to fully relax on their day off. And even if you had some people, you know, they, they call them hard boundary setters, they said, you know, I'm off on Friday and, you know, I'm not going to check Slack. It still created tension with people, mm -hmm. you know, in the team. Questions like, you know, do you send a message on, on you know, on Slack or whatever communication platform or do you let it wait till the next morning? You know, how does that communication flow then work? There were all kinds of issues. And in the end, when the company went back to the 40 hour work week, there was no pushback people mm. were actually quite happy to go back to how things were. I think it also showcases to us again, and I think it's not just about the four-day work week. This also applies to remote work and compressed working weeks and flexible hours, that it boils down to what is the work being done? Who's the human being doing the work and what is their particular needs? Because I think this is a prime example where people actually preferred the five-day work week that's 
a bit more structured. And I firmly believe then the lastly there, it also boils down to how are we creating a work environment? Because work has to be easy to get done. And mm. something we've learned out of this particular case study, as well as a lot of the remote working case studies, if it takes you most of your time to figure out whether people are at work or not, as opposed to actually getting the job done, I think it creates a lot of inefficiencies that doesn't necessarily lead to benefit. I'd be curious to know, Dieter, is this maybe something that, you know, this is a 23 people mm. company. It's a very small company. There's little redundancy in a larger organization with, you know, five, 10,000 employees where you have much more standardized processes. Would it be easier in an organization like that? I think there's definitely opportunity in some of the bigger organizations and it boils down to having resources available, right? There's always somebody else that can take over or step in. I think, unfortunately, smaller companies de do tend to have key person dependencies, which I think is going to make it difficult. They do provide other benefits. So I think they need to be able to highlight what the, some of those would be for their people if they are not able to provide something like a four day week. For me, it mm -hmm. still boils down to what is the nature and what is the type of the work as well. I think if you are working in a very standardized process driven environment, I think it is a little bit easier as opposed to being you know, in a design capacity where it's very much based on you, what you bring to the table, as opposed to somebody being able to execute yeah. uh, their knowledge within a process. Yeah. So what was interesting for this specific company, they said, you know, we're going to end this pilot. We're going to move back to, a, to, to five days a week, but we're now going to jump on the next bandwagon, which is unlimited paid time off. And I'm always a little bit skeptical when it comes to unlimited paid time off, because it always feels like this trap of, you know, we're going from X amount of days to unlimited number of days, but you know, don't take too much holidays and i'd be curious to know your opinion on on making unlimited time off work dieter do you think that is something that's viable or is it actually just an intervention to get people to take less days off it boils down to culture right eric doesn't it because i think the regardless of what your leave policy is whether it's unlimited or it's pay time off or whether there's a set amount of time people do need to take it boils down to what is your approach as an organization towards leave i think where i've seen it go horribly wrong to quote you as well is where companies have got unlimited leave, but it's actually just this blanket that they utilize to say, but you can take leave anytime, just make sure your work is done. And I think that creates mm. much more of a toxic culture where people don't want to take breaks for the fact that it's just not done and it's just not recognized. So I'm very skeptic about unlimited time off. I would rather support a healthy, robust, promoting leave and promoting taking breaks type of policy that also says we believe people need to. And I think there's some legislation in place in certain parts of the world that just helps that argument a lot more. Mm. For example, in Europe, uh, it's very hard to to not take you know a minimum of twenty days because that's just 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 legally, or at least in the Netherlands, that's that, mm. that's legally set. And in a lot of European countries, it is. I think what is interesting is that companies like Goldman Sachs, for example, are now switching to mm. unlimited pay time off, but they're saying for their executives, they want them to take at least fifteen days a year as kind of a minimum requirement. If you don't take fifteen days yeah. a year off, you know you get a bad performance review. And I think that is an interesting way of going because then you have unlimited time off and at the same time you do have a minimum time off that you do need to take so there is that almost that pressure to take some time off and to set the good example for the the broader employee uh, base as well could that be a potential solution for companies i think it is definitely if we move towards that direction it is about how we promote what we are doing and how do we talk about leave and how do we talk about people taking breaks because i think that is really the crux of what it boils down to so i think and i've seen in a lot of organizations that have gone with the unlimited um, leave route employees sometimes treated with a bit of suspicion and then they say mm. oh so it's about leave liability oh, it's about that you're not going to pay me out for the leave that I'm actually due. So for me, the root cause of that is how are we talking about this in the organization and how are we promoting that as well? What I love about what you are saying though is I love the fact if an executive can stand up and say, you know what, for the last three weeks I've been on leave, I actually don't know what my inbox looks like today and I'm going to catch up and that's what I will be doing today because I think it promotes the behavior for people to say it is okay to disconnect. And I think that's what we need to get right. And I think it's also interesting that more and more companies are taking kind of mini sabbaticals. I think it was, was HubSpot who famously around yep. Christmas, you know, just took a week off for the entire company. Also, you know, put it in the on the on their inbox whenever a customer reached out, they said, you know, we're on a sabbatical for a week and uh, too bad for you, you know, we won't be able to help you for the next uh, next couple of days. What is your opinion on those kind of, of, of elements within companies? Mm. That has become quite popular. I know LinkedIn also had like a, a well-being week or a well-being mm. couple of days where the whole company was out with the exception again of skeleton staff that still had to mm. make sure that the company kept on running. I do think it sends a very clear message around the intention of the company. So I'm quite supportive of that. I think if it's done in a fair way and if it's done in a fair way to the customer of the company as well, you know, with regards to communicating, we will be offline, you know, if you do need to get hold of us, do the following. So I quite support that because I think it does bring something new to the table around our view towards well-being 
taking breaks, giving people free time, etc. My question just is, all of that has to be managed in a bigger context. Mm. Things in isolation, I don't think solves it on its own. So I think a culmination of a lot of these things associated with what you're really trying to achieve, I think that's more the way to go. I agree. And I think that makes this space very interesting. You know, whether it's a four day work week, unlimited time off, you know, this, mm. this kind of mini sabbatical or wellness uh, uh, week, we see more and more of this happening now. Mm. And I think it leads us towards a, a more broader wellness philosophy or strategy that a lot of mm. organizations aren't there yet, but at least they're starting to think about and I think that makes this a very exciting topic. I agree and I, I want to celebrate the HR professionals that are leading these conversations because it is natural that we will fail and learn and move forward but what I think we can celebrate is that finally we're starting to question and query a lot of the traditional practices and asking you know but mm. why should it be a five-day work week? Why should leave be restricted? Why should there be you know certain processes in place? And yes we will make mistakes and we will learn from them but no harm done let's rather push those boundaries a little bit yeah. more because I think that would lead towards a better world of work for all. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that spirit of experimentation, like we saw in this story mm -hmm. of a company, just trying it for a certain period for a couple of months and then deciding, you know, this is not the way to go. Let's try something new. And I think that spirit of experimentation is also something that excites me very much. You know, when it comes to HR, I think in HR, we should do that. We should do that more. That's it for our main story. Thank you very much for joining us. Before you go, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get a notification whenever there's a new episode of HR Hot Topic. With that, my name is Eric van Volpen. This is Dieter Veldsman. Have an absolutely great day. Bye-bye.